Confidence is a weird thing. Most of us know it when we see it. However, it's also a highly misunderstood thing and often gets misrepresented. Hi, welcome to Mari Monday, where I answer your questions that are sent to my marshmallow. And the other day I had someone ask me this. Mari, I have no confidence. And frankly, I have no reason to be confident, but every reason not to. But I don't want to be stuck like this forever. I think developing confidence would at least be a step in the right direction towards improving myself, but the problem is, I don't know how to go about developing confidence. What can I do to become more confident? And please don't give me advice like, just be confident, because everyone who tells me that has had a reason to be confident, but I don't. Now, before I explain what confidence is, I think it's a lot easier to explain what confidence is not. Because I hear this all the time. Like, oh, just have confidence, and even if you can't have confidence, then just fake it till you make it. But Here's the thing, there is no making it. Confidence is not a mountain of gold that you just reach one day after which, you know, you'll just walk around being a confident 100% of the time. Like, no, that's just not how it works. I feel like the whole faking it till you make it is kind of like a very overly simplified way on how you look at confidence. Not saying that it's terrible advice, but it's typically just, it is more on the generic side of advice where people will just say, you know, this is what you got to do, but then they don't really explain how you do it. It's like a turn of a phrase, so to say. So what does confidence actually mean? Well, I feel like confidence is not something that you just become. It's something that you feel and you experience once you learn more about yourself. For example, what do you like? What don't you like? What are you going to accept from others and how they treat you? What are you not going to accept from others and how they treat you? The more you understand yourself and what you represent, then the more confident you will become. And now you might be thinking, okay, well, how does that make me more confident, Mari? I already know myself, except you don't. The person who is currently watching this video is different than the person you actually are. You say you have every reason not to be confident and that tells me you're living in a false reality, Anon. Because who are you? Right now, you don't sound like the real you. This sounds like the fake you trying to make you have this false sense of reality like you're not good enough. And I read up on a theory about this the other day that I'm gonna share with you and I hope that this helps you. So please take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. And what I had read was that Right now, you are just built up from a bunch of different beliefs that either your parents, your friends, your boss, your teacher, society, all of that has installed into your mind. And everything that they have told you up until now is your reality. This is your reality. Or is it? Your whole life, your friends, family, teachers, and even loved ones have been straight up lying to you this entire time. Because think about it. Are you this really lazy, inconsiderate, unconfident person everyone else made you out to be? You're saying you have every reason not to be confident, but who gave you those reasons? Is that really the stuff that you truly believe or is that just what everyone else taught you to believe? These thoughts running through your mind are not your thoughts. They are other people's thoughts clouding your mind. They want to keep you from the truth, from you, and make you constantly run away from reality because here's the thing. You and your reality are just the result of what you have accepted as the truth and the actual truth that everyone is trying to keep away from you from realizing is that there is no self. Like there's no definition of like who who you are as a person other than what you define yourself because in reality there is no such thing as like self beauty standards shitty corpo jobs unjust social interactions all of this is shaped by the reality that we accepted as the truth and a lot of this is more subconscious too but what's amazing about this concept that i had read about is that once you understand and accept that there is no such thing as like a self then you can change your reality and become the person you were always meant to be and that sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo spiritual whatever stuff, but it's actually very interesting when you kind of take a moment to like think about what a self is. I'm sure you probably have heard of the phrase, I think therefore I am and that whole like concept of like, if I think then I must exist, but how your reality is and your perspective is very different from how other people perceive you and what their reality is around. And the only real way we can like make sure that we actually exist is leaving some kind of trail in some way, whether that's a paper trail, a digital trail, um, an offspring trail, you know, a flesh trail, so to say. <laughs>
You don't become confident. You represent confidence because you are confident. This is not the same as faking it until you make it, by the way. Although for some people, that phrase can be helpful to understand this concept of self, even though like self isn't really like a thing. But basically, confidence is just a state of mind, just like happiness, sadness, anger, and you can attain it by understanding yourself, like your triggers, what you want in life, pretty much getting more clarity on what your goals and wishes are and making sure that these are things you actually want and not just stuff that people have been telling you all your life on what you should be because there is no such thing as a self right you don't need to be this somebody that everyone else is telling you to be you can be what you want to be i'm telling you anon to shift your perspective a little bit on your thoughts and your behaviors and becoming more observant of what is causing these thoughts and behaviors to happen because right now it doesn't sound like your thoughts and behaviors are serving you in any way shape or form in fact it's hindering you from living a life that would be more fulfilling it's like you're not allowing yourself to live the life that you deserve to live because somebody else told you to and you don't need to have your life be controlled by others you can control your own life and a really good way to start doing this and kind of shifting your perspective a little bit is to start out small by acknowledging and celebrating the wins that you have in life which i know can be really hard to figure out it's not easy, especially when you've been told your whole life that you're either not good enough or that you could have done a better job or something as like, oh, like this isn't what I wanted. But something that I kind of learned when I was going through my whole journey this year is that it's not your job to make someone else feel better about their perception of you because you can't change someone's perspective of you. People are going to feel a certain way and it's not your job to change that. The only thing that you can control is how you react towards what they're saying and doing and reacting to however it is you're feeling. You can control the things that are happening to you. You can't control things that are happening to others. And with that being said, other people cannot control you. They don't have, it's, it's not their life, you know, it's your life. I remember when I first read about this and it was really difficult for me to understand how self doesn't exist and that I'm a nobody when everybody wants to be a somebody and blah, 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 blah. Here's an example of that might help you understand this concept a bit better because this is how I started having more confidence personally. I have always been yelled at for every little thing I do growing up because everyone around me just couldn't understand my logic for doing things a certain way. And because they couldn't understand it, they would just get angry and tell me I'm wrong. Everything that I'm doing is wrong and I'm stupid and I shouldn't be doing or saying things that I clearly don't understand and all this like other stuff, like constantly just micromanaging every little thing that I do. It's actually kind of crazy to think about like they spent a lot of their life worrying about what it is that I was doing with my own life. Like it, it's kind of crazy. And for the longest time of my life, I really believed all these things that people would tell me. And every time I would start to do something, I would start second guessing myself. And like, even now, I still sometimes second guess myself. I really struggle with making a decision on something because I'm sitting here thinking, is this the right thing? Are people going to like this? Like if I didn't get an overwhelmingly positive response, then I would just assume that people didn't like it. And then I would just start being really mean to myself and insulting myself by saying the exact same things that I always heard growing up, like how I'm stupid and how I can't do anything right and how like, why can't I just be normal? Like I used to say these things all the time. And here's the thing about that. Remember what I said a moment ago that those people couldn't understand my logic and therefore they got mad and started yelling at me. Well, what if like everything that I had done wasn't actually wrong maybe the stuff that i did was right i would get the same results as other people but the methods in which i would get those results were was what people couldn't understand and they didn't like it so just because i did things differently than most people they didn't like it they had a problem with that it bothered them so much that they went out of their way to put me down and this set me up to have unrealistic expectations of myself trying to live a life with what i thought others were expecting of me and the truth is i'm not a mind reader i don't know what people really want from me unless they communicate that for me and the same could be said for you anon like you don't know what other people want 
if they don't tell you that. And even if that's the case, you're still not obligated to meet that expectation. What matters at the end of the day is the expectations that you want and how you can go out to set those expectations for yourself. Because again, you can't control anybody and no one can control you. For the longest time, I felt unappreciated because I'm constantly just living in fear, trying to guess what other people want from me. And once I started recognizing this pattern of behavior and how just unhelpful these thoughts were, and that these thoughts aren't actually what I truly believed about myself, well, that's when I started being able to notice my like small wins. And what really helped me to start doing this was journaling. This year, I started journaling everything I did. And I remember like I really started getting into this more back in July. And every time I would accomplish something, I would highlight it in my journal and constantly refer back to it anytime I started thinking negatively about myself until one day I realized something. I don't owe anyone anything except for myself because there is no self, right? I've gotten this far in my life through my own hard work and accomplishments and looking back on my notes, I have actually accomplished a lot. And I don't need other people telling me what to do, how to do, how to be, because I can make that decision for myself. I'm, I'm not a vegetable on the bed, like laying there and can't form my own thought. Like I can choose what I want to be. And anyone who has a problem with how I go about living my life and how I carry myself, well, that is their own problem. That is something that they have to deal with. It is not my responsibility or my problem to deal with other people's problems. Like, unless if I'm being paid to problem solve something, then I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to focus on any of that kind of stuff, right? Because that's not my job. It's not something that I need to fix or even give any extra attention to. That is what confidence represents to me. A confident person is someone who does not let anyone prevent them from living their life as their own authentic person and doesn't let anyone else define who they are. This is the reality that I believe in. So Anon, I think the better question that you should be asking yourself is, what does confidence mean to you? However you define confidence will be, will be based on your own personal experiences, your own upbringing, and you have every right to be the person you were meant to be and want to be. And again, start by celebrating your small wins. I know it's hard to kind of see what those good, positive qualities are. And I know some people like to say, oh, you should ask other people what your good, positive qualities are. If that does help you, maybe that can be something that you write down, like asking people what are some good things about yourself? Like what are things that they like about you? And then you write that stuff down and kind of like keep track on yourself on what it is you're doing and thinking. Every time you start to think about a negative thought, write that down. So that way you can kind of look at it and ask yourself, is this really how I feel? Or is this because maybe at some point in my life, this is what someone told me and it made me feel bad. Once you start to realize that like a lot of these feelings that you're feeling are coming from just being told like things that are just not true, it helps for you to let those feelings go and to move on in the sense of like saying, hey, you know, that really sucked, but that's not who I am as a person and it doesn't define me who I am as a person. A confident person will talk to themselves with confidence and not let other people's negative perspective filter their view on themselves as a person. One suggestion I have for you is to start talking to yourself more positively. Like, I literally want you to go into the mirror, look at yourself and say like, you got this, if that starts to help you. I want you to say things like, you got this, I believe in myself, I am confident in my abilities, I am enough, I always try my best, I am confident. This can be your reality, but you have to let go of this self that's been holding you back all these years because you are allowed to exist as a confident person and no one will ever take that away from you unless if you give them that power. So don't give people the power to define who you are as a person. You have the power to define who you are as a person. I hope that answers your question, Anon, and this video can be the start of your journey to becoming the person you were always meant to be. You do have a reason to become confident and start off with acknowledging the fact that you do have good qualities about yourself. Thanks for tuning in for this week's Mari Monday and please feel free to submit a question for future video. And lastly, I want you to remember that everything will remind you of something. Bye!